incredible Michaelites. It's all about St. Michael's 1858. Today we have got, uh, uh, we were supposed to have three stalwarts, but uh, we have got uh, Mr. Yashovardhan Azad. Uh, he is St. Michael's batch 1969 and uh, IPS 1976 MP cadre. The rest of our profile I will let you know once we come to the uh, personal achievements. Uh, we have got Arvind Singh 1979 batch and IAS. 1988. So, uh, welcome, yes, Bhaiya, welcome, Arvind Bhaiya. Unfortunately, uh, Mr. Neeraj Okhari could not join us because there has been some mishap in his factory, so he has to rush down. So, let's uh, we'll try to get him in the in the coming episodes. So, uh, let me straight away go to Amber sir because the flow of the event is goes that uh, we'll go to the school stories anecdotes first, then we'll come to the uh, the personal and the professional achievements. So, Amber sir. All yours. Okay, thank you, Nishan. Thank you so much. And a very hearty welcome to Mr. Yashavardhan Azad and Mr. Arvind Singh. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, and uh, so I'll just, uh, you know, we just go down a bit of memory lane, go down St. Michael's corridors. And uh, with uh, your permission, uh, Arvind, I'll start off with Yashavaya. All course. right. Of yes. Course. And uh, so welcome, welcome to this uh, incredible Mike Lights zone. You know, as Mr. Bhaskar Rao, uh, Commissioner of Police, Ma Bangalore said, it's an incredible Mike Light and incredible Ma St. Michael Zone. So, welcome to it, uh, Mr. Azad. Thank you. Now, you see, I have a very, 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 very strange and very fond connect with Yashavaya. In fact, I have told him, I think I told him twice during those uh, legendary that annual meeting that he you know, organizes. Uh, for the MOBA, that is the Michael Old Boys Association, sometime in November or December, once a year. And uh, Yashavaya must have been in class five or four, and his voice was just maybe cracking. And, you know, and my mother also was a very active uh, All India Radio uh, drama section artist. And then, you know, my mother came back home and she said, yes, you know, I'm doing the play, and that is Ek Love it. Okay. And Eklave was none other than, well, Yashavaya. All right. And therefore, I made it a point. I was a day scholar then. And I'm sure he also perhaps was a day scholar. I think he must have been in class five or six at that time. And then, you know, I made it a point more to listen to him, all right, the hero of the play, rather than to my mother. Okay. And, you know, and I was really, and she was, of course, she played uh, Eklave's mother. All right. She was always the tragedy queen, you know, <laughs> in every way <laughs> that she did. <laughs> so this was my first memory. Then, of course, I had this wonderful, wonderful chance of having Yashabaya, you know, his cupboard in our uh, clothes room, we used to call it the clothes room, when we moved over to St. Michael's, was just next to mine. Now, I've always been, you know, completely zapped and dazed by the poise and the equanimity you know, the composure that he always had, despite being, despite, and I'm using the word despite, because, you know, lots of times, you know, like people, when they are very talented and when, when they, you know, they are multi-talented, they tend to be, sometimes, I mean, there are, there are, there are people like that. Yasha Bhaiya was a very good public speaker. Yasha Bhaiya was our school cricket team captain. Yasha Bhaiya was the captain of the Gold House, that is the, it was Lions, in Xavier's and later on Gold or Yellow House in, in Michael's. So he was the cricket captain. When we moved over to St. Michael's, I remember by mistake, Mr. Jeff DeCosta had made a little bit of a, you know, a four paw in the list. And from Panthers, that is Blues, I moved to, you know, the Gold House for one year. And I remember Yashavaya leading the team. And since it was an inter-house team, so I got a chance also to play for Golds. And lots of people asked me, hey, you, you should have been the blues. Anyway, so that was that. And secondly, I, have n I never saw him, all right, lose his voice. I never saw him raise his voice. I never, you know, and despite the fact, and, and still, you know, he was not one of those inaccessible seniors. I mean, normally, you know, when you have the people who are more quiet and all that, they have an aura, they have an air. But, you know, you could always go out to him, you know, to seek help. 
And so from where did you actually get this poise in the sense, hey, was it you know, inherent in you, you were born with it? Or at the same time, maybe some teacher or the other. I mean, I, I always felt that you reminded me of Mr. Jeff DeCosta to a large extent. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, you know, I mean, I'm mean, i interested in cricket and so on, like you. So I always felt, you know, he was very, very cool. Mr. Cool, always. <laughs> and I'm sure, uh, you know, as a police officer also, when he went to Pakistan, you know, for that inspection and so on, the one person who always was smiling, all right, in the photographs, it was Yasha Bhaiya. So Yasha Bhaiya, memories of St. Michael's, and over to you to describe you, that is, Mr. Yashavardhan Azad. Fantastic. Thank you. Superb. Thank you so much. Uh, you've really uh, gone down the memory lane. And, uh, well, uh, uh, let me say at the very outset, I, I, I don't have any special talent, and nor did I have then. Uh, but definitely, uh, you know, the school kind of hones your skills. It sharpens your reflexes. And I remember, because you're talking about cricket and, and the team, the Gold House, Lions, we used to call it then, Lions, Panthers, Tigers, and Leopards. Yeah. And uh, I remember, you know, a school child, uh, as a child, you have many heroes. And I remember, at that time, two teams had come to India. One was England. I still remember Puller and Richardson were the openers. Yes, yes, yes Puller. And, and uh, the two Australians playing in Calcutta were the Laurie and Stackpole. And I remember the way they misbehaved and I had written a small letter to Searchlight complaining about their misbehavior <laughs> and it got published. I carried that, you know, extract with me in my pocket for the next six months trying to show it to almost everyone. But you know, the heroes in school, I remember three heroes. One was a fast bowler, Bishwa Mohan Rai. Okay, uh, yes. I think yes. he was 62 or 63 batch. 63 batch. Then there was a brilliant uh, 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 batsman, distinctly related to me also, Shaleshwar Mishra. Shaleshwar Mishra, yes. Standing batsman. And then there was a great all-rounder, Girja Dutt. A fast bowler, left-hander. And you know, these, these were the people I would emulate in style. And later on, uh, please believe me when I tell you, my happiest moment was not when I was elected the student council president, but when I was made the cr cricket captain of captain. school. And representing school in whether it, I think it was Sifton Cup? Sifton uh, Cup, uh, yes. It was on Sifton Cup. School in that college, inter-college tournament. Yes, inter-college tournament. And getting that fat PC Bhagat out from the medical college was one of our biggest achievements. <laughs> <laughs> in, the, in that in that cricket team, uh, three of us were selected for Bihar schools. Uh, 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 Arun Chaudhary, a brilliant swing bowler, my class again. Uh, Mohammad Shafi, another fast bowler. Yeah, fast bowler. Third was myself. And I remember those evenings uh, when we would be practicing over there. Father Cleary would be in his chair, very closely monitoring our batting. And Father Carver, a very ah. handsome, tall, Good looking a youngster. And he, uh, he, he even uh, opened for St. Michael's once. And he opened for St. Michael, and unfortunately, he got a ball right on his guard. <laughs> it was a fast bowling, and he fell down flat. Now, yeah. these are some of the memories, these are etched in my mind, and I can never forget. But let me tell you one thing uh, the greatest thing I found about school, our school, and, and education in general those days was they would train you to be an all-rounder. Good or bad, it could be different now because here you're talking about specialization. But there, you were, you were supposed to be good in everything. So it was like, like I became a jack of all trades, master of none. So you play a little bit of cricket, you do well in studies, you sing a little, you, you do a fair, you, you kind of do dramatics. And I remember also the most important thing which left an impression on my mind forever. And when you call about, uh, when you talked about that personality of being cool, it was the retreat. It was a retreat every year we should have. And I'm not making any difference between St. Xavier and Michaels. You know, I, I, can't, I came to Michaels the last year. There was a lot of intermingling. It was almost the same, I think. There's hardly any difference. And that left a very, very deep impression.
you know, what is right, what is wrong. And, you know, Arvind would uh, uh, bear, uh, agree with me when in our service, there are so many times when you get frustrated, you get, you get, you know, you just, you like tearing your hair apart. And, and those are the times when these things remind you of how important it is to maintain your exterior and it's your cool. So let me tell you one thing. Uh, my, my batch was brilliant. I mean, every batch thinks that they are brilliant, of course, but each one was better than the other. And that the juniors uh, were outstanding. I mean, my, my, there was, there was my junior Arun Singh. I mean, he's Arun's <laughs> brother only, another outstanding guy. So, you know, you had, you had amazing talent, an array of talent, and it was so exciting. I mean, uh, it, it, there's something which you've learned in school. Unfortunately, unfortunately, uh, what happens in our system is when you are with so many things in your head and mind and body in school, when you come to college in India, you're at a loose end because there's nothing to do. You have time hanging on your hands, and that's the time when the education like St. Michael's or St. Xavier's helps you out. So, I mean, I'm so happy you brought, brought this point. It has taken me <laughs> down the years in memory, and I'm perhaps the oldest now, and that's why I had MOBA. Not because of anything, but except my seniority. <laughs> but thanks a lot for... for uh, uh, no, you were, me... you, you were my hero too. <laughs> you were my hero also. I, I remember you bowling, you know. Uh, you had a very, a very smooth action. And, but then you could make the ball talk. All right. So, Nishant, uh, Yashavaya was actually our medium pacer. Okay. An all-rounder. And then I think he would bat around number six or number seven, if I remember correctly. Oh, yeah. Super, super. Yeah. Uh, all right. And you, you were also, just talking here. You were also a part of the football team? Yes. Uh, 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 we were a member of the football team and we played against the army, what battalion, and we got bashed up like anything. From <laughs> it. <laughs> it was really tough. Yeah. EMP. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you so much, Yashabaya. Yeah, thank you so much. I mean, like, it was wonderful going down memory lane with you. Now, we come to Nishant. Shall I, do you have any questions? Huh? No, I think I'll come back again because uh, we will together do quite a few things because, uh, you know, what I think over the, over the you know, the days we have been uh, dealing with this particular incredible Michaelites, we have seen there is a lot of connect with cricket uh, any which ways. So, we'll talk on, on the second half of it. Yeah. Let's, uh, you know, continue with Arvind Bear. Okay, so now, uh, yes, we come to Arvind. So Arvind, I, I say Arvind, of course, the whole, the family, you know, I, I, have a, I, have a, I have a very unique sort of a connect, not just because of Arun, your elder brother, all right, of course, he, he has been my, I would say, my public speaker hero. To, a, to, you know, I think I remember three people distinctly. One was Jhulan Mukherjee, Yashabhaya would remember him. He had a very unique style of always starting his debate, his set speech, you know, with an example, and then he would come to the topic. Yeah. All right, to the motion. Okay, so Jhulan Mukherjee was one. And then there was one very good in Hindi, uh, Ramna Jha. Excellent. A senior. Right. Yeah, I remember. And then, of course, Arun uh, was another one. I mean, like, I mean, he was, of course, my classmate and also Blue House, Blue House teammate. And, uh, Arun, when he was in the hostel, I think one particular year, I was lucky to have Arun, all right, as you know, his, 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 his uh, cupboard next to mine. So I've had, you know, wonderful cupboard partners, you know, adjacent to mine. So obviously I've learned quite a bit from them. Uh, see, Arun's dad, uh, Arun and Arvind's dad, I think, you know, you were in the, I mean, he was in the electricity department, engineer, all right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I remember this was in Nehru's time, and when all these young officers, you know, had to take some what was known as socialism, socialism classes. Okay, and I had this wonderful connect with, you know, uh, I, I considered myself with Jem, Jem, meaning Jeremy Scout, you know, Atticus Finch, because I always felt that my father was among the oldest fathers, you know, of. Uh, you know, uh, the, the school students, the mic lights. And somehow they I used to feel a bit complex about at times. I still remember. And then it was one particular 
parent teachers meeting Nishan, okay, and uh, St. Michael's was a little away because you know we were more used to St. Xavier, so I used to live in Kagan. Yes. So my parents used to come from there, you know, like they used to catch a train and then come to Xavier very easily. But Michael's coming to Michael's was a very difficult and arduous task if you did not have you know your own car, yes. okay. And I still remember uh, it was one of those meets and Arun and Arvind's father, okay, uh, much younger than my, my dad, obviously. And uh, he touched my father's feet with Arun standing, you know, beside him. Arvind, of course, hadn't materialized then, maybe in some mics, okay, or maybe in the world, <laughs> okay, all right. So then, you know, I asked my mom. How come Arun Singh's father is touching Baba's feet? You know, I was, you know, it was a shock. It was a shock, which later on became a very pleasant shock and which helped me overcome that complex. And then my mom told me that, look, under this policy of the government, so your dad has actually taken certain, you know, these uh, socialism classes, all right, which uh, Arun's dad you know, had attended. And I just felt that my dad could, could teach, could take classes and that too of Arun Singh's dad. I mean, you know, I mean, this is how that first connect. So with Yash, my mom, with Arun, <laughs> my dad. All right. Now this is the kind of connect I have. Arun, uh, now just cutting my story short. You joined, uh, which year did you join St. Michael's? Uh, I, I moved to St. Michael's in 1971, uh, when you were in senior Cambridge. Oh, yes. Uh, I, was, I was in class five. So I did three years at St. Xavier's, class second, third, and fourth, and moved to St. Michael's in 1970. Okay. All right, great. So that way, all right. And, and as Yashabaya said, I mean, like, we, Michael's and Xavier's for us did not make much of a difference in that sense. And plus, you had Arun also, you know, there. And I remember, you know, Arun, sometimes, you know, suddenly we'd say, where well, Arun disappeared during the break time or the recess. And I think, you know, he had gone to see his little brother, whether he was eating his different properly or not. Okay. I mean, it was, it was, it was, it was so wonderful. Okay. But I, I don't know why I got this impression that for a few days, you know, you had come to the hospital and you were in the study hall. I, I don't know I, I, how I had this impression, but then must be, you know, from the school. Now, Arun. Uh, when you, Arvin, sorry, when you came over to St. Michael's, you know, as a very young lad, of course, you had your elder brother with you and a very iconic brother. And, you know, and in fact, everybody is iconic. And I, and I have a very distinct memory about your mother's contribution, you know, to certain things, which, of course, I will not say over here, that I'll share with you and Arun later. Arun also must have forgotten that. Okay. So, um, uh, what was the change for you like? For Yashobhaya? The cool, the captain cool that he was, okay, and a bit of, you know, Ajay said, losing his temper a little bit once in a while, all right. And then, of course, you had that other very good captain cool footballer, okay, Ash uh, Ashok Singh. No, Varindra Bhattacharya. Michael. That was Varindra Bhattacharya. Uh, uh, Varindra was there. Varindra, of course, uh, came from Xavier's, but there was yeah. one Ashok Singh also, your batchmate. Uh, who was in Afraid of the Dark, that play. Ashok Singh. He was, he was a very good footballer. He was a captain. I don't remember. On the football team. I, you don't remember. Yeah. So he was, yeah, you were there with him for only one year. Uh, but ah, he yes. was, yeah, but yes. he was, you know, like you from the Xavier side, he was, you know, from the Michael the side, Michael. you know, and okay. you know, very cool, very calm, very composed. So how did you feel, Arun? You were very small. Arvind, you were very small at that time. Okay. Yeah. You, know, then, you know, class two, three and four in St. Xavier's, we yeah. were like, uh, you know, we were like uh, really young children. And they were not, I mean, the only thing we would do is come to school, study, go back home, do our homework and come back. And there was no concept of, you know, uh, doing extracurricular work or sports or other activities that time. So actually, when I shifted to St. Michael's, that's when the real progression into, you know, that school is something else. And it's just, just not studies happened because I was in St. Michael's from class five to class 12. And, uh, you know, this, then uh, you saw the range of activities that were open. I mean, we also had our heroes. 
we saw people who were excelling in public speaking we saw people who were excelling in sports or oh, they were legends we saw on the cricket field uh, you know like dilavez hoda or ashwardhan ah. sinha or vijay kohli indravadan singh and we would we would not say yes it would be a treat to go to the cricket field and see them play uh, you know then we had the thing uh, you know our heroes in other parts of in other aspects of sports track events field events you know the then the spring fair and the whole range of uh, you know whole lot of activities that we saw so it really a new world opened us opened up for us when we reached uh, st michaels and uh, uh, like uh, my previous speaker mr yashwardhan sinha yashwardhan azad said that uh, one has such a range of very fond memories you know associated with these activities it can be on the school bus that you went you went to school the friends that you made there it can be in the car when you sometimes we went on car tour you know in the classroom the friends that you made made there the, there were boarders there then you know in participating in all these extra curricular activities like public speaking elocutions debates sports activities cricket uh, track and field events and as of course writing i got an opportunity to edit the school newspaper scan and that was also a great experience and a very enabling experience that one had you mentioned my mother and uh, these days in the lockdown she's staying with us so i asked her that uh, you know i have to go on this webinar and uh, with this school children so what uh, no difference did you notice in me once i shifted to st michaels and uh, i started there and pat came her reply when she said that uh, you know i suddenly found that your friends the number of your friends had gone up and they would be coming home at all odd hours and i had to feed them so that was a mother's <laughs> response very <laughs> that just shows the little arvind was also growing up there you know yeah. the more friends so, coming home hmm. so that was that was uh, my mother's first response and that gives a sense of the you know increase the nice set of friends that one made in school and those friendships remain intact many of them are still in patna some of them have moved to different parts of india some of some are living abroad but we are always always in touch and whenever you meet even after there is an interval of time there is that warmth that uh, you know happens and this is only due to the bonding that we got at school so you know great memories and, uh, and a very you know enriching and enabling experience at school uh, one on of course when i was talking about public speaking one incident that is definitely etched in my mind and that i would like to share when i was thinking about what i should share on this platform is uh, you know when we went for an interjesuit elocution competition uh, with father cox to st xavier's hazaribagh in 1975 i was in class 9 and my i was speaking in the extempore senior section ranjan choudhury was my partner he was speaking in the senior section and javed ashraf who was two years my junior was speaking in the junior section and we were in class 9 so javed was in 7 he was the baby of the team so when the elocution competition happened ranjan and i won medals javed got a bronze medal but because all of us had some medals and some position st michael's got the shield so we went got the shield No, 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 Nishant. We wait. The story doesn't end. <laughs> we got the shield, and then we went. You know, we were fettered all the way to the dining hall. We slept at night with the shield on our bed and the medals under our pillows, and we were all very thrilled. And next morning at seven thirty, we had to take the bus from Azari Bagh back to Patna. So we trooped in at about five thirty-six after breakfast to meet Father Cox, and he says, "Guess who doesn't keep the shield?" <coughs> so we said, "Why? What happened?" so apparently there were three judges and one of the judges had made a total mistake and once the re totally was done none of the three of you know our positions had gone down my i was not a silver medal winner ranjan was not a winner and javed was also not a bronze winner and so st michael's from number 1 had slipped to number 3 so we had to return the shield <laughs> you can imagine at that age the 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 frustration <laughs> after having dreamt all night the medal under your base below uh you know having to go back now to home and say that you know uh, but uh, you know even though the since there is hazari bagh principal was saying that let them go with the medals at least just return the shield let the boys go let's not disappoint them but father cox kept his stand and he said that no they haven't won it they they will not take them so we didn't like it at that time mm -hmm. but that was a very important message that father cox sent you know and he a very important lesson that he taught us in life that uh, there will be ups and downs and you have to take the you know the good times and the bad times together so we went back to school and we we came back to patna the next day of course for your father harland was the principal so he gave us a you know speech in the assembly about how it was a noble gesture we got letters also from hazari bagh but that incident remains etched in my mind about the 
you know, tough stand that Father God did, even though he saw the disappointment written on all our three faces. Yes, Nishant, we talk about the incredible Michaelites, you know, and we talk about their successes and so on. But I'm sure a large part of their success, all right, can be attributed to those small moments of setbacks also that they would have faced in life, all right, in their professional life, not only as students, but even, you know, as, you know, officers, and how they coped with that and came out of that, that is the real success. All right, and, 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 and Arvind just gave a wonderful example, and the training started from that side. And Nishan, whatever little, you know, I have achieved, you know, uh, with, uh, as a teacher, and then later on as a yes. principal. I mean, it's basically <clears throat> these lessons, you know, that we've got from Father Cox, from Father Cleary, from Father Zebert, yeah. from Father Murphy, you know, mm. and so many. And this was basically, and that helped me, you know, in yeah. becoming a more acceptable and a better principal, you know, than what I would have ever been. So obviously, it's absolutely, I mean, <coughs> thanks, Arvind, for that wonderful, because I made it a point, you know, because there was a huge hangama in the Agra circles after competitions. So I would just say that if we are hosting, a debate competition or a GK competition, then we will definitely, if we come first, we will honor the children in the assembly, but then give the shield away to the, another school which comes second. And I took it to the parents. Okay, look, the bickerings later on, and you know, that affects the kids more. Let them be a little more noble in their victory also. All right, since we are host, come on, give it to them. And this was a practice that we started in DPS Agra. I remember Arvind, that yeah. wonderful story actually. Yeah, no, I remember in the earlier episode, Pramath had mentioned about Father Cox being made of a different metal. Yes. And I remembered this incident immediately because, you know, this just, yeah. he took, you know, there were two options. He could have taken the softer option of kind of continuing with that thing. But yeah, it took that because that was the correct step. Yes, very true. Very true. That, that's so, why. Thank you, that's why yeah. Thank you, Nishant, for giving me this opportunity. Are it's, 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 it's incredible, <laughs> Michael. <laughs> so basically, we all talk about this. The fact of the matter is, when people achieve big in life, the challenges and hard work go hand in hand. So that's what uh, it's all about. No, so so I'll, I'll come to Yash Bhaiya again. So, so Yash Bhaiya, 1976 MP cadre, IPS officer. He has served as Special Director, Intelligence Bureau, Director, uh, Sports as well and uh, served as Secretary Government of India who supervised SPG, which mandates the protection of the Prime Minister as well. He uh, is a member of International Security Advisory Team for Atlanta Olympics in 1996. He was the National Security Coordinator to visit Pakistan, uh, you know, uh, during the Pakistan cricket team in 1999 and also coordinated the visits of President Clinton and Putin in India which is not small, it is huge, yes, we are congratulations for this, all these things have achieved. Medal for Meritorious Services in 1994 and President's Police Medal for Distinguished Service in 2003. So, yes, we are salute to from my as well. So we'll start with you. Can you explain the basic when you started, uh, you know, the challenges you faced as an IG Bhopal during your early years of IPS services? Well, uh, uh, the uh, DIG Bhopal is basically like a police commissioner Bhopal. So when you're in the capital city, uh, as the top cop, uh, then you know the pressures are a little too much. And the pressure comes in the form of uh, too much expectations from the public, the pressures from the politicians, the close scrutiny by the press. So you are, you are like in a, in, in a pot where all the time you are being watched. And so many a times there are these confrontations uh, and it's, it's, it's how you stand firm or uh, many a times you feel like giving in. Uh, but the advantage one had was that, you know, like Arvind, I also didn't have my home cadre, uh, Bihar. So one didn't have any, any kind of links or anything in Madhya Pradesh. So it was easier to deal with this and I won't say that, you know, I, I, I was heroic in, in, in my, um, you know, reaction to these kind of pressures. I, I played it according to the book. 
but ultimately you know after two years i was thrown out of that post because of a clash with some powers that be and i was extremely relieved uh, because i was being um, uh, i was picked up as the a uh, member of the uh, international security advisory team to atlanta and i was posted in a place where no one used to go earlier and that was called director youth and sports so so in a way i i loved it i was there for a year and and finally i ran for my life uh, for deputation to delhi so it was a wonderful experience uh, and and i'm happy that i got out just in time and did what i felt like because it's better to serve uh, the way you like for whatever time it is than to continue for a long time submitting to pressures from all over bhaiya so we also know about your uh, experiences in pakistan so it was a great uh, honor when we uh, came to know about when the dig of lahore asking a top indian policeman to sit on the chair to write comment on the visitor register and the 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 band welcoming you with that rajkumar's famous uh, song rajkapur famous song avara hu so you know i we would just like to know about your experiences what you you know faced in pakistan so very interesting stuff we have we have read about yeah uh, pakistan was a golden run uh, uh, i i knew all the players um, uh, because in 1999 when the team came uh, the pakistan team came to india i was a deputy director in the intelligence bureau and there were threats to the team so therefore i asked i was asked to be the um, you know security coordinator and i was i was very happy and the moment, and i i remember i went to receive the team of the tarmac as they got out from the uh, plane and all of them because they knew my brother kirti uh, so they were extremely they, they felt very comfortable they were very happy and including the manager of the team who was uh, who's actually from bhopal the senior patawdi in fact and if he would have been in india then he would have been the actual patawdi so uh, we had a, we had a great time together and when i went to pakistan in uh, 2004 i remember it was to decide whether we should have a resumption of cricket ties after 15 years or not so that was a great opportunity for me because i traveled all over faisalabad multan karachi you know uh, all over north fr uh, frontiers islamabad lahore and lahore was unique of course because uh, dig lahore had invited me uh, i went to pakistan seven times in fact so in one of my visits dig lahore duggar i think his name was mm. he asked me to address the uh, police services of pakistan they are like the ips officers of pakistan and that was a great honor and these guys were from you know the aeronautical engineers they had come from some of them were from the medical line Uh, so they were member of the civil services and when we entered the uh, the oldest police line perhaps the british old police line there was this band playing avara <laughs> hum and then he took me to the, <laughs> he took me to the commandant chair and asked me to sign knowing knowing the sanctity and and the traditions i hesitated and he said that yes you are the first foreign police officer we are asking to sign this register so that that was wonderful and then i addressed those uh, youngsters and we had a great chat and later on they became great friends of mine because when i was there uh, for the sark summit for security and and protection of our own prime minister uh, these these youngsters would come to me and discuss you know issues so many issues and it was wonderful in fact a uh, professional it was one of the most rewarding uh, visits i had there are so many incidents with shahid afridi <laughs> with uh, yunus uh, with uh, with uh, you know uh, the captain javed mindar he presented me a book and how these pakistan team would abuse each other including our own team saurabh ganguly and how we changed uh, uh, you know the, the teams uh, we took peshawar first we said we'll go by flight then we announced we'll go by bus then we said that we are taking we are going a day later and finally we went by flight so these were all uh, you know experiences and how in karachi we got a message of uh, some attack and whole night how we were busy securing the defenses it was a wonderful trip and and very rewarding 
yeah sounds very memorable as well <laughs> okay but yeah, i'll come back to you again i'll i'll just go to arvind bhaiya first arvind bhaiya so now your life as a as an ias officer has been extremely great we have seen you have served as additional secretary chief secretary of energy government of maharashtra then cmd of msp gcl and mscetcl as well uh, plus uh, you served as minister economic at uh, the embassy of india tokyo as well so we would just uh, you know start with this uh, you know, what challenges you faced when you were in your couple of good position in the energy department See, before i have now come to delhi in november 2019 and right. uh, before that i spent uh, 10 years uh, outside delhi uh, outside the government of india of which uh, seven were dealing with various parts of the energy portfolio in maharashtra and three were in that assignment in tokyo that you just like right. the energy uh, you know assignment was very challenging because uh, all of you must have heard of the enron uh, episode or the yes. enron back and the enron project came to maharashtra in 95 and there was a huge political controversy whether the project was required or not and in as a result of that there was a, you know no new investment or addition to power generation capacity or any augmentation of the power system in maharashtra mm-hmm. in 2009 so almost for 14 years the net addition to the maharashtra's energy capacity was 0 megawatt and maharashtra as you know is india's most industrialized most urbanized state and energy demand there keeps growing it is today also one of the highest it is the highest in the country so when i finished my tenure at delhi and i reached there in 2009 the the person who's now the chief secretary was then the um, mr ajay mehta he is the chief secretary till 30th of june he was then the energy secretary of maharashtra and he said i want you in my team because we are fighting this great battle and at uh, that time maharashtra was facing an energy deficit of 18% in 2009 and uh, Uh, so parts of the state had to go in for load shedding and this was something that was unheard of in maharashtra so we, we i was part of the team that we we got around to the job of building new generation transmission and distribution capacity in the state and uh, you know that in that period throughout india lot of generation capacity came up especially in the thermal sector and maharashtra was no exception and maharashtra the demand being large we had to bring in large amounts of capacity and all that happened and uh, we, we we were all able to bring in uh, create new power purchase agreements augment the distribution and transmission infrastructure that would carry the extra load and uh, then i got that assignment to work in tokyo and when i came back uh, from tokyo in 2017 i succeeded mr mehta who had moved on to the municipal corporation as uh, uh, municipal commissioner uh, mumbai municipal corporation so and by then i realized that one year ago maharashtra had become power surplus so you know my job now as energy secretary in 2017 to 19 was to manage this surplus and how you know we could make it use it to generate resources for the state so that was a very satisfying and you know challenging experience i remember once when mr mehta was on leave and in 2013 i was holding his charge for that one or two weeks that he was on leave and i had to present the scene in the cabinet and uh, i remember i got up and told the, one of the imarathi one of the senior ministers who asked me that uh, we are doing load shedding on only 20% of the feeder state so that was also felt to be a proud moment because only 20% of the state was under darkness that time but anyway that is now a thing of the past and maharashtra is surplus and uh, last uh, summer it uh, handled a peak capacity of uh, more than 25000 megawatts which is one of the highest yeah, in the country well done that's why that's why you are you are achiever through and through <laughs> so no, yeah, another thing I, i was the part of the team that was involved in this process there were a whole lot of people yes. other, you know i mean as i said my leader was mr mehta then of yeah. course uh, there was other stakeholders who all came in and contributed fantastic yeah. so we are as we say that uh, sir michaels cannot be completed without cricket uh, and and cricket around and in the system so uh, as we all aware of uh, you were with sharad pawar ji uh, when he was the agriculture minister and that season he, he he was also that time the president of the bcci and the international cricket council and uh, the privileged world cup victory 2007 was during that tenure of upa1 when you were with them can you share that experience because cricket without michael and michael out without cricket don't go <laughs> you know i i basically was a task or i joined his office 
I, there also I succeeded Mr. Ajay Mehta, who was earlier his prime minister. So I joined his office as a, when he was agriculture minister in 2005. And my brief was to help him in the official work, which was to, you know, the paperwork and the follow up on the agriculture side and on the food ministry side that he was handling. And then he, went, uh, of course, he had, uh, you know, other occupations also. He was, uh, his party was in power in the state. So he was like a super chief minister at Delhi. He, he was heading a lot of groups of ministers. So these sundry jobs would also come to me to handle in his office. But then he became president BCCI and subsequently president ISIS. So he had a different set of officers in the office who would look after that work and who would travel with it. But in, when it came to the crunch, sometimes when he had very important speeches to give as president BCCI or as president ICC, you know, the draft would come to me because I was seeing his, his speeches also as agriculture minister. So, you know, one for a final look. And that's where my scan experience came in very handy to have a quick look at, you know, these drafts. And I would feel very proud, you know, later on he would travel to some event in uh, ICC or BCCI. And he, he would say words that would come out in the media. And that, that would be part of the speech that we had, uh, you know. So all perfect. Gone. Well done. So that was a very heady experience. Yes. And of course, that was the time when he was president that uh, India won the T20 World Cup under Mr. MS Tony in South Africa. And though, though that was a moment that gave us a big eye. I still remember that journey from the airport to Vankhede Stadium. And, and luckily, I was in Bombay that time. It was not a single breathing space on the road. It was totally full. Well done, Bia. So uh, I will again come to Arvind Bhaiya because he is now the chairman of Airport Authority of India. And we will talk about and we will also see the AV of uh, one of the most uh, important thing entire Patnaite will wish to. We all want a good airport. So we will talk about the Patna airport again when we come back to uh, Bhaiya. Amber sir. I will, I will uh, just go to the last question to Yashbiya and that's about, uh, uh, you know, uh, as uh, Central Information Commissioner in the CIC and he made some landmark decisions. So, uh, Yashbiya, stage is yours. Well, uh, I uh, joined, uh, I, I took oath of office as they say. As the Central Information Commissioner, I think 2013, sometime middle of November. Yeah. And um, well, to cut cut uh, the the boring part uh, short, you know, CIC basically it's a, it, it's an institution who takes care of right to information. Now, right to information act was passed in 2005 by the UPA uh, to 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 ensure that people uh, know exactly what the government is doing. And basically, uh, through the uh, through the answers that they get, uh, uh, it also reveals uh, transparency, and it's also all about accountability. So when you sit uh, in a quasi-judicial capacity, uh, handling um, you know departments like uh, municipality, the public distribution system, health, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, uh, there is there is a great responsibility because the first time in my life. I was operating without a boss. You report to yourself. You take leave yourself. You you hold the court yourself. And uh, I would have given say around about say eight thousand uh, judgments, and that related to a lot of uh, in, in important issues, environmental issues. You know, projects say in Uttarakhand. Uh, it was about electricity. Uh, it was about health ministry, and you feel happy when. Your judgments uh, lead to, say, the admission of a merited child uh, somewhere in Karnataka, uh, which was being denied uh, for some odd reason or the other, or the public distribution system somewhere where there is a gap or a lapse, it's corrected and somebody gets benefited, or uh, you know, students uh, somewhere get their scholarship, which which is which is stuck. So all in all, uh, CIC was indeed an extremely rewarding. Um, uh, system and a regime which should be furthered by everyone and uh, I, I would I would count those five years as one of the best years of my life. Bahia, also uh, as we all know that you have been the president of MOVA since long and uh, uh, St. Michael's is all about uh, people still meeting and, and Delhi is uh, pretty consistent with that meet. 
how do you plan this so that uh, everyone meets and how do you also meet all your uh, you know classmates and you stay your friends which is a which is a great thing actually well uh, i'm lucky that i have a tremendous team with me you know i have a secretary uh, barun mitra barun mitra is again secretary to government of india and and he is religiously active i have another uh, outstanding uh, one amitabh ranjan who's who's uh, one of the senior editor at indian express and then we have a couple of very young ips and is officers who are digitally very suave and who are able to keep this vast data to themselves uh, on 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 the on the computers and they are the ones who actually organize everything and i take the credit so <laughs> i am the, i am the president for last what 15 16 years because basically we could not because of any special talent but because i am the senior most and uh, it's indeed uh, come up very well because we are seeing more and more enthusiasm more and more participation uh, from yeah, even fathers from uh, Xavier's and Michael's do contact us and we are able to do little little things and uh, we are extremely extremely happy about moba and i'm happy that the some of yeah. the uh, many of the moba guys are in delhi so yeah. they are in touch and it's easier to be in contact and organize these uh, you know fun filled events yeah and you know what now now people are very happy with the whiskies as well sir <laughs> i'll go to arvind bhai again sir arvind bhai yeah? so now now that you are the chairman of airport authority of india and uh, uh, the planning for patna airport was uh, just a little time before you came in and obviously uh, barring patna all the cities of the country have got all modern airports and we are all wishing that patna still should uh, improve from a four bedroom flat to a airport at least now that we can see a substantial work happening everywhere and it's thrilling for us so uh, first i would ask you the question of the current situation as a chairman of ai it is very important uh, position uh, we would like to understand how difficult was it to restart flight operations from 25th may onwards what happened uh, last month knowing the covid situation all across this is very important you all will come to the airport. you know you know the all flying was banned in india from 25th march domestic yeah. international everything so uh, airports were there was virtually very little activity airports were not shut but uh, there was very little activity going on so we you know of course the bigger larger airports were all functioning 24 by 7 because there were you know international flights going overhead especially cargo flights and they need our air traffic services but the smaller airports we had to shut down and you know we were they were working at single shift day shifts but so first of course the task was to you know the transport medical supplies so the airports really worked there and you saw medical supplies that is you know testing reagents testing kits ppe other equipment going to the northeast going to ladakh going to jnk going to deep south and all this only happened because the only mode of travel available was through the airports and uh, you know the figures are that almost 1000 tons of equipment was transferred you know medical equipment between different parts and that went on in the months of uh, april and may and then of course the evacuation flights started from abroad which uh, started bringing indians who were stranded in the gulf or us or europe but the real challenge was once the government announced the opening of domestic flight flying from 25th may because you know now people had lost their confidence in flying whether was it safe and uh, whether we would it lead to the spread of the disease even the staff uh, at uh, and the security people because we had incidents of the air traffic control staff and the security people at mumbai they contacted uh, you know they they were affected by the disease so it was a big challenge and we had to start and work, operate in a new normal environment which involved contactless you know working mm. so now a new set of uh, standard operating procedures were set in and uh, everything has to be contactless you have to print your boarding pass reach there you know not show it to anyone then you go to the counter no contact there's be you know the counter person is behind a glass shield security is also like from a distance so you know then you're given a face shield and a mask and other protective equipment you go into the aircraft no food is served there and then you land and you have to go through a health check up and other procedures so we had to ensure that uh, the confidence in flying comes back and uh, luckily we have been uh, you know touch wood uh, lucky so far uh, because uh, uh, we allowed only 33% of the 
approved the summer schedule to take off. And on the first day, we had about 25,000 passengers flying in almost 250 departures that took place. That was the first day, 25th year. Gradually, the numbers have gone up. And today, on an average, we are doing 70,000 passengers on a day with 800 departures. And that are happening throughout the country. Uh, of course, it is only 25% of the pre-COVID level of flying, domestic flying that was happening. We are at 25%. But uh, what is encouraging is that since 25th May, 2 million people, that is more than 20 lakh passengers, have traveled by air from one destination to another. So we hope that this number will slowly go up. And now the government has cleared that you can travel, you know, fly up to 45% capacity. So we expect the normalcy to come back slowly. But it was a big challenge to work in this new environment. Superb, yeah, superb. I can tell you my experience in Bangalore airport, I could see zero contact to the aircraft, which was fantastic, which is out of the world. It's not easy to handle and, and people are doing some, some fantastic work. Mm -hmm. uh, now, now Arimbe, Arimbe, we are coming to that Patna airport thing. Uh, again, Patna airport, the work has started and we all want to understand from you as well because I'm sure after your joining, uh, Patna must have got that special attention. How important is this to you? Of course, it, it is because, uh, uh, as you mentioned earlier, most of the state, they, most of the state capitals now have new airports and uh, you know modern. But Patna somehow we have not been able to expand the capacity of the terminal. And uh, the, whereas the terminal's capacity is only 0.7 million passengers per annum, you know it is handling about five times more than five times that capacity per annum. Already 4.5 million passengers per annum. So it's choked, and there is congestion. The number of flights have gone up. You know, in the, this last summer schedule, Patna had 58 flights every day. So the number was very, very big. So we hope that this new project, which was awarded, of course, before I reach, it was designed and awarded before I reach, is underway. And I'll uh, it's a, it's a request, request you to have a look at the audio visual. And yeah, I'm sure yeah. in the next uh, two, two and a half years, this terminal, when it comes up, will double the existing capacity. It will take it up to 8 million passengers per year and remove the, you know, congestion uh, that... But we'll have to wait for two, two and a half years for this project to get over. Already about 30% of the work is underway. It has been completed. This, this looks beautiful, actually. So it'll have a, you know, two level. The departure level will be on top and the arrival level will be below. So the two level entrance. This is the Amber, sir, you, you have to understand why we call Michaelites are incredible. Why to understand that? Eh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, yes, well done, Arunbia. Superb. Superb effort. I, I came in when all the designing had taken. No, no, I'm the, the effort is going on, so that's superb actually. It's not easy. The vision is to be there, sir. And you yes. see how the two captains are, I mean, like, you know, giving full credit to the team, which is as it should be. A captain yeah. is as good as his team, isn't it? And but then a team requires a good captain. So we and, had and this is and this is all, this is almost like Hazari Bagh, doing the hard work and not taking the credit also. <laughs> <laughs> this is the arrival right. lounge area the drawing of yeah. that. So of course this will solve the congestion problem at the existing terminal, but it does not solve the other basic problem of Patna Airport, which is the length of the runway. Yes. yes. That, that, that's limited. And all of you who would be landing at Patna know that suddenly after you land, the aircraft has to apply brakes and then turn. And then yeah. you know, typically most airports have a parallel taxi track so that the landing planes can move in there and the, you know the next plane can land in. But there is no parallel taxi track at Patna. So the length of the runway is short and there is no parallel taxi track and that restricts the number of landings that can take place in a day in Patna. So hopefully, I mean, if we get some land which is a bit tough because there is a lot of construction that has happened around the Patna airport. So then we'll have to look for alternative sites if you're looking for you know larger and more flights to come in. But at least this terminal work which is happening in two, uh, two and a next two, two and a half years should solve the existing congestion problem at Patna airport. Superb, yeah, superb. So as, as, the, as the flow goes of the incredible Michaelites, we have to welcome one teacher each, each webinar so today again we have got our stalwart teacher, uh, Robert Francis sir. Sir, pranam. Sir, come mute. Robin sir taught me. Robin sir must have taught Arvind. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Ye
he's taught uh, me and you know he's uh, uh, been in touch and uh, my my wife is in, is from jaipur rajasthan so uh, sir also knows her cousins who have studied in since he was jaipur so mm -hmm. it was from sir awaaz awaaz aa rahi hai aapko sir ha ha awaaz aa rahi hai ha to see the vast change in people in your personality all that thing hey also go right you also people so how is everything in your life your your children and all what you doing okay yes uh, we are all fine and uh, we've all retired i have retired at least from uh, the service but i keep busy and it has been an incredible journey and uh, it looks like uh, as if it was only yesterday that we were in school and time flies and you know we never used to believe it when in school when uh, your the teachers used to tell us ki time flies we thought yet samay to guzarta hi nahi itna padhna padta hai now we realize it flies <laughs> that's the difference uh robin sir yes. yashovardhan bhaiya hai 1969 se aur 1979 se arvind singh bhaiya hai to uh, to ye Which year he was there? I just could, I could remember. Which year was he? Arvind Bhaiya, nineteen seventy nine. Oh, seventy nine. I didn't bring the the record. Sir, I didn't bring today. All the photographs and all. Nineteen seventy six. I had. I see. I have all this. So nineteen seventy six. I see. I see. Bhaiya ka. I have. I have. I see. The last. I think it was last. No. It, which batch it was? I didn't bring. <laughs> Yes, sir. Ours was the second batch of ICSE. Oh, second batch. And uh, Arvind, Arvind, Sanjay Arya used to come to me. And there are two more boys. You remember Arvind? Yes, ah, sir. Sanjay Jain, Pravir Jaiswal. Ah, so they started my uh, coaching center. I started with them only. <laughs> yeah, they started this. And I still remember. So I, I only used to come to drop them, but these very good friends of mine were regular students at your center. You also became my student. I I I my resident at Kilwe Twenty One Kilwe Puri. Yes. Twenty One Kilwe Puri. Ah, it was very pleasure to see you people. You were so big and have very good status in the public figure. Status. Sometimes I used to talk to these fellows. Barun uh, Bhattacharya, not Barun Mitra. Sometimes he talks to me, Barun Mitra also. Barun. Uh, Barun is my classmate, sir. Uh, Barun, I, I can, I, I have his photograph. I got all the photographs of your people from very childhood, from the from fourth standard. I got all the photographs. Mm -hmm. I still have got some numbers of the students. Wonderful numbers. Yeah. Yeah. Abbas, sir, just like every time bless, we give all the blessing to everyone, sir. आशीर्वाद दे दीजिए सबको आशीर्वाद है हम एक चीज जानना चाहते थे ये रंजन भट्टाचार्य कर्नाटक के स्टूडेंट थे क्या रंजन भट्टाचार्य यस वाज ही व्हाट ही रंजन भट्टाचार्य ही फ्रॉम द स्कूल यस यस व्हिच ईयर ही वाज द जूनियर आई आई थिंक टू द बेस्ट ऑफ माय नॉलेज ही वाज 1975 अरविंद The phone number of your brother-in-law. I'll, I'll send it to you, sir. वो 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 बाद में करा देंगे सर. वो हो जाएगा सर. ठीक है सर. प्रणाम सर. प्रणाम प्रणाम. Good morning. Okay. Okay. So we'll come to the end of the session. Ah, uh, thank you, Yasho Bhaiya. It was a great interaction with you. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Thank, thank I think it was a great experience uh, meeting yeah, yeah. you guys. Yeah. Thank you, Arun Bhaiya. Some 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 uh, exceptional achievements. Thank you, Bhaiya. Thank you. Thanks Thank for having me. Thank, Thank you, you sir. Giving me this opportunity to connect with uh, everyone from school. Thank you, sir. And Ambar Bhaiya, Ambar sir, you have always been fantastic. Oh no. Please, please keep on. You have to correct yourself. <laughs> yeah.
no 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 bhaiya as well correct yeah <laughs> thank you thank thanks everyone and uh, so next uh, next uh, webinar webinar 6 we are going to have uh, samrend pratap singh 1969 we will have no, sabha kareem 1971 71 yeah and uh, we'll have uh, arun mishra again 1979 so so let's connect and stay tuned thank you for uh, arun yeah. if i correct you should write arun as 76 icsc because he left yeah. after 10 Okay, okay. I'll, I'll do that, sir. Because I was just uh, popping as per you. I went. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much.